Welcome to the Quantum Biology Collective Podcast, where we break down the practical strategies of this emerging science, starting with healthy light habits and going wherever the quantum superhighway takes us. This is your host, executive and life coach, Meredith Oak, with a quick reminder that podcasts are conversations, not consultations, and definitely not medical advice. We're here for informational purposes only. To follow up with our amazing guests, please do check out the show notes and to stay in the loop with the QBC podcast, join our email list, also linked in the show notes. All right, before we get into this week's episode, um, I have a little public service announcement, and this public service announcement comes courtesy of a listener named Chloe. Chloe, thank you so much for sending us an email. Um, Chloe made a really great point, which is that we have a lot of um, great content on our YouTube channel that apparently nobody knows about. So Chloe wrote in and said, hey, Meredith, I've been listening to your podcast for many, many months, but I only just now discovered the excellent series of short videos on your YouTube channel entitled The Basics of Circadian Biology. It made me sad to think a lot of people might be overlooking this wonderful information. Please consider adding a message to your podcast intro to let us everyone know about it. Chloe, that's a really good idea. And I really appreciate that you took the time to write that email and reach out uh, to remind me to let everyone know that that is a lovely resource that we um, put it together with a bunch of amazing circadian experts, many of whom have been, I think all of whom have also been featured on this podcast. But it's just a series of videos that explains from the most basic, then working up to sort of more complex um, ideas, how, how circadian rhythm works. And because it's edited together, it's not just a conversation. It is a little bit more sort of, uh, it feels more like a curriculum than a conversation, which most podcasts are. So Chloe, thank you for writing in. And if anyone else has thoughts that they would like to share, what they'd like to see, or if they found something interesting that they would like me to share on here, what I suggest you do is go to qbcpod.com. That's qbcpod.com. Join our email list and you'll get a welcome email and you can hit reply to that email and share your thoughts. I would really love to hear from you. Podcasting is amazing, but the one thing that's a bit tricky is it's not terribly interactive. So if you... um like Chloe can find a little time in your life to reach out, that would be much appreciated. Okay, so our guest today is uh, just, I had such a good time talking to her because she is somebody who spent a really long time going around and around and around uh, the traditional healthcare system without uh, without really an, anyone helping her or giving her any heads up that maybe there was a different approach to things uh, until she finally hit the wall um, with an intervention during COVID that just uh, brought her to a whole new paradigm and she's completely changed her life. Now, I just also want to say uh, I have a lot of people on here who've totally revamped their lives when they have come to understand certain things. And I also, I just want to take a moment to say that that's not like necessarily what you need to do. Some of us just are like, oh, I'm going to spend more time outside. I'm going to block blue light at night. And then we continue on with our lives as they are. So a total uh, revolution in job and life and all of these things is not necessary. However, for the people who are uh, inspired to do that, their stories are so compelling. And today I am talking to Vanessa Baldwin. She is currently a classical homeopath, an ancestral health coach, and a circadian biology health coach. However, just a few short years ago, she was a public school teacher uh, in New York State, in the United States. So to hear how that whole journey transpired, keep listening. Vanessa is totally engaging, and she shares her story um, and all the gritty details uh, of what it was like to be caught in the chronic illness trap and how she got out of it and is now helping others. Uh, and of course, don't forget to visit bondcharge.com and get yourself some blue blockers if you don't have any or if you can't find yours or if you need extras <laughs> and put QBC in the discount code at checkout. Enjoy. 
Vanessa Baldwin, welcome to the Quantum Biology Podcast. I'm really excited to get into it with you. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Meredith. I'm so excited to be here. I mean, honestly, I think I've listened to almost, I mean, almost every episode of the Quantum Biology Collective Podcast. So really? and I have learned, honestly, a great deal. Yes, really. I learned so, so much from every speaker. They're all amazing. You bring on such great people. And then I'm like, oh, I want to have them on my podcast because <laughs> I it. love it because I want to as much as I can. You know, they're just honestly, you think the community isn't that large, but then you start realizing it and you, you have like we had our own podcast and we were like, oh, my God, like there are so many people I want to get on the show. And it's like it's literally can be forever. Like it's so infinite. So it's the community is getting really large. And I think that's awesome. You know, spreading this word knowledge. Yeah, absolutely. This knowledge is infinite and it's trickling out to people in all kinds of different ways. And yeah, I keep finding like little pockets of people or um, I should give credit to my husband. He spends a lot of time on Twitter and finds these people, <laughs> finds little pockets of people That's uh, cool. Yeah, who who are studying the circadian research or the grounding research or something and integrating it into a lot of them into, you know, uh, traditional medical backgrounds, which yes. is super cool. That's really great. I'm so glad to see that because... Uh, we're going to talk about my own healing journey, but it's like I had so many things that could have been helped with circadian practices and principles. And it was like, nobody ever said that to me. And I was like, man, I wish it would have happened a little sooner. So the more people and the more people who are in this field and the more doctors who know about it, the more functional medicine, naturopaths, all these people who can just tell these pe tell your clients like these simple lifestyle changes that can make just such a huge impact. I'm like, I'm here for that. So like just spread yeah. it as much as we can. <laughs> Yeah, it's gonna help like so just people. that the little shift that like oh actually the light you're exposed to is as important as the food you eat like wait what like just to start thinking about things from that perspective um it's it doesn't you know it's not like these doctors have to like do everything for you they just mention it the way they mention a lot of other things like oh you should exercise oh you should eat right oh you should think about your light <laughs> Yeah, but they're not educated on that. And that's no. you know, what I'm so happy with the work that you're doing because it's bringing that forefront because it is coming to hopefully it will be something in the future that they will be educated on and that it can they can know that information to share with their clients if they're dealing with depression or insomnia or anxiety or any of these things. Right. This could be huge. So it's a huge yeah. paradigm shift that you're you're just a major pioneer. In, and I'm just I'm happy to be part of it. I'm happy to be part of the train. <laughs> Well, you're a major pioneer too. I mean, we're it's such early days that anyone who has any clue about this is a pioneer. So we're all we're all on the front lines together. Um, but I, I don't want to use war metaphors because it's actually fun. <laughs> it's unlike war. Oh, yeah. It so is. So yeah. we're on the front lines, but not in a war. In a fun, I, yeah, and I a say fun this parade. Time. Yeah, the yeah. people in the quantum biology collective world are just. I say it all the time, but they really are the best. Like they're, this is the best people I meet. They're just so full of life and vital and happy. And it's just like, oh, it's all those beta endorphins maybe and all those wonderful things. Like they're just so aligned and just, I love it. So, I know yeah. it's crazy. Like even the new people, I oh, like I have all these ways to set up, you know, I don't want to say I screen people, but you want to make sure that every cohort, you know, like for the certification, right? That everyone's sort of, you're not going to have any, people who might like pull down the vibe, so to speak. Yeah. You want people who are excited to be there and invested in whatever. So I often over the years, like I've, I keep like dialing back my screening, hmm. the screaming parameters I have, because everyone who, who shows up is great. Like they just yeah. like every, I just went through 150 applications and I was like, okay, I just want to make sure there's no one in here that's coming in with a like rah, 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 attitude. Yeah. And so I had my team all set up to, to just to like, pull out the applications that I was like, I don't think this is a good fit. And I'm, they're like, okay, which ones? I'm like, none. They're all, I, they're none. amazing. These are all amazing people. <laughs> so there's something about, I don't know, the vibe of if all, you're drawn of, to this of work, all this. Yeah, yeah. It just yeah. kind of flows. Um, yeah. And you are an example of that. So t I really mm -hmm. want to get into this because you have such a, an incredible story, right? You started out as a school teacher. You had mm -hmm. Uh, the, a chronic illness journey similar to a lot of people where all of the traditional avenues were like, yeah, we got nothing. <laughs> 
So you <laughs> figured it out. You figured it out and took responsibility for your health. And it's brought you to like, this, like a new life, a new career, a new, all kinds of things. So all kinds of things have changed. It's like a whole new person, a whole new, it's just <laughs> crazy how, you know, and I honestly, some people could look back on it and be like resentful about what's happened to me, you know, because we'll talk about it. I had like an injection injury, right? That was part of my story. And people could look back and be like, so resentful. Oh, I wish I never did that. But honestly, yeah. when I look at it now, I'm like, I'm glad that that happened because of the fact that it brought me to all of this and changed my whole world and life. And none of this would be happening. I wouldn't be helping coaching clients. I wouldn't be helping people heal with homeopathy. I wouldn't be talking to you. I wouldn't have my podcast with Heather Crimson. Like I wouldn't have taken the courses. I wouldn't know all the amazing people that I know. So yeah. So yeah, it's just, I'm happy that it happened actually. So it's the way that the life is, the trajectory of life is the way it's meant to go. And yeah. Yeah. And every problem can be a portal if yeah, we choose exactly. to let it. I love that. Oh, yeah. I love that. Every problem is a portal. Ooh, that's a good one. Because <laughs> uh, it is. Yeah, that's so true. So yeah, my health history or my health journey and what brought me to quantum biology, right, is, well, um, I had chronic bladder issues probably all my life, I would say. I started when I was five. So this is something that I've dealt with a long time, probably a low redox my whole life, poor mitochondria health, you know, just a weak constitution. Um, so it wasn't like... I was this picture of health, but I looked like I was to most people. So it was kind of chronic to the Is point that because you were like in good shape, like you worked out? Yeah, or, well, okay. yeah well, we'll get there. There was a point right. in my life where I wasn't, but there was definitely right. a point in my life where I looked like I was really healthy, but I was really spiraling out of control in many ways. Um, and I think that's really important to share because people are like, yeah. oh man, you look like the picture of health, you know yeah. what I mean? But inside I was really crumbling a lot. Um, but yeah, no, I had chronic bladder infections as a child and was put on long-term antibiotics. And of course, you know, mm -hmm. I grew up very unconventional. So that was a huge detriment to my health and a huge suppressive therapy that I did for a long time, destroying mitochondria, all that. And of course, nobody knew better at that time in my life. So that's what we did. And of course that never fixed it. And I pretty much was on antibiotics or, you know, uh, antifungals for like all the time. Like I was like, it was like a routine thing. Like I'd go into my doctor, OBGYN, or whether it'd be like your general PT, uh, general doctor practitioner. And I'd be like, I need antibiotics. I have another bladder infection. It was just constant. It wow. was like all the time. And if it wasn't that, like after the bladder infection would clear, I'd get a yeast infection. So then I'd have to take those. And it was just one or the other, like for my whole life. And I, I mean, and at no point did any of these medical professionals say like, Hmm, I wonder why this keeps happening. <laughs> no, never. maybe we no. should and yes, treat the symptoms, but also why do you keep getting these? Yeah, exactly. That like, question what? was not asked. Yeah. Okay. No, no, never. No, no. So yeah, I mean, I would basically just call my, like, I need another, I need a round of, like they knew me, like I need another round of antibiotics or I would demand it, you know? Um, so yeah, so that was kind of like my MO. And then as I got older, other things started happening. I, you know, got married, had kids, got really obese. I'm only five foot, so 60 pounds heavier than I am now. So I was quite heavy. And um, then I was, you know, obviously hormonal issues, metabolic issues, all kinds of things are developing. And like everybody and else. was the I'm weight like, gain like after pregnancies or what, what was precipitated weight. that? Yeah, it precipitated. There was some before that as I was a teacher and busy with life and everything else. And then just kind of each kid probably gained 20 pounds and then never lost it and just continued to be heavier. And then really there was a lot of unhealthy relationships with food and things like that as well, like a kind of addictive tendencies or like nothing crazy where it was, there was definitely some binges though, and definitely not in a healthy place with food um, because it was my only energy source probably for a long time. And I didn't really think right. about it that way till now, yeah. but you know, you need it. So anyway, uh, I gained a lot of weight, but so then what do we do? Like, oh, I'm going to go to Weight Watchers. Like, that sounds like a good idea. Like, I'm, I need something to help my health. I'm 60 pounds overweight. It's time to take care of me. I'm done having kids. I'm going to shed this weight. I'm going to get healthy. I'm going to take care of myself. And I, there's a lot of faults in a program like that because of the fact that they're not gearing towards, you know, nutrient dense foods. They're gearing towards how many calories are you eating and how many calories are you consuming? And now knowing what I know, I'm like, it's not the calorie transport chain. It's the electron transport chain. Like that's a whole different ball game. But at the same time, it, when you are calorie restricting for years and years, which is what I did, I lost the weight. Like you, if you know me, I am like type A, 
I can follow a plan extremely well. You tell I me how I have noticed going that to about you, it. Vanessa. <laughs> yes, I am going to eat those. Red, you tell me, I'm going to do it. I will eat those right amount of points. I will not falter, and I am. I'm. I'm good. Like I can do it. So anyway, I lost the weight, but um, and then I started also getting into marathon training, uh, chronic cardio, a lot of exercise, and just this kind of like go 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 hustle culture. Like, I don't even know, like when I look back at my life then, and now I'm like, how did I even survive that? Like I had to be living on chronic stress hormones. It was like, I never mm-hmm. stopped and repaired. I slept like five hours a night. I worked out oh my, my God. Day, and, and I did it I, a, day in and day. I, like how depleting was this to my body? Not eating enough, wow. not eating any fat. I was eating no fat. Like I was like, oh, fat's bad. Oh my God. I mean, just like, you know, very depleted state. So then I started racking up diseases all of a sudden. So here I am, this really healthy, fit looking person who runs a lot and exercises a lot and meditates and does yoga and all the things. And like people on the outside, like, you are so healthy. The first one I got was Raynard's, where your fingers were turned yellow, like in the cold. Um, so I was like, this is weird. What is that? I never went to conventional treatment for because it's not the end of the world, but it was the first sign. And then the next thing I got was alopecia areata, these huge, huge bald spots all in the tops of my head, like all over. And I was like, that should have been a sign to me. Like what you're doing might not be a good idea. Like you might need to make some changes in your life. Um, but I just went to the dermatologist and said, what do I do about this? How do I fix it? You know, and just put these cortisone injections in my head, which is extremely suppressive and not a good idea. And I would do it every three weeks and it would never cure it. It would just move it. Like, so it would be like, oh, it was here. And that spot would grow. But then I'd be like, I develop another spot here. Oh so it was, like, it never it was like, I don't care what you do. I'm coming out. Yeah. <laughs> you can like, push me back like, down. I'll pop up somewhere else. Attention. Something is going on here. Whoa. Oh my so God. I did that for probably like two to three years. Like I did those injections and I was like, Oh, that's really not smart, but I kept doing it. And then the, the most challenging thing for me was, is um, I had another bladder infection and I took antibiotics. And then that time, one time I was like, I took the antibiotics and I was like, wait, what happened? And I still feel the same. Like, I still feel like I have a bladder infection. Like these didn't work. I went back to the doctor. I'm like, these antibiotics didn't work. Maybe they're, maybe I'm antibiotic resistant. I need a different brand strain. Like I've, you know, whatever you have to fix this. And like, well, we can't give you antibiotics because you don't have an infection. I'm like, well, what's going on then? Because I feel the exact same way that I did before this and how I've always felt when I've had a bladder infection. So then, of course, they send you to specialists and whatnot, and they're like, okay, you have what's called interstitial cystitis. And I'm like, oh, what's that? They're like, oh, that's a chronic infection or a chronic inflammation of the bladder. Like, just chronically, you're inflamed now. I'm like, well, what do we do with that? They're like, well, you could eat less acidic foods. I'm like, okay, I could try that. Like, at least that was something holistic, I guess, yeah. in a way, to help. Like, that's something that they know that helps um, interstitial cystitis. And then, of course, there's medications you can take, which I've tried, and you know, I did that for some time. And um, then the pandemic hit. I was super stressed teacher in New York. We were, you know, everything shut right. down. Yeah. There was a lot of stress, a lot of fear, a lot of things going on. And when we went back to school, I was deemed to teach virtually. So I taught elementary school. So I mean, it's not as much EMFs as some, but it's predominantly a lot. But this was different because now I taught virtually. So I sat down in front of a computer all day, literally with three screens, of course, blue light. I didn't know anything about it. I didn't know to do anything. Um, And, you know, all the lights, of course, and all that EMF. And um, I started developing other symptoms. Like I never had been fatigued before, but I was fatigued. My joints hurt. I was having a lot of injuries. I was feeling a lot more cold. I was like, something else is wrong. So then I had Hashimoto's. I'm like, okay, this is a lot. Now I keep like adding on all of these diseases. Right. So like, yeah, so it was, it was a lot. Wow. Yeah. I, wow. There is so much to unpack in here. And I just want to <laughs> say like, Vanessa, good for you. Like this is a, this is a crazy journey. And I, yeah. you know, I honestly, I don't come across people who are that deep down the allopathic route who are able to take a hard turn out of it. Like, so this is incredible. And I want, I want to get to that part. But I also just want to, you know, I think it's so interesting because I want to talk about like your weight, your weight journey, right? And it's so mm-hmm. often you see someone who's overweight and you make all these assumptions and yet you are a person who is like, oh, you know what? I'm not doing this anymore. And you did 
all of the things, right? Like if you just, if you took a person off the street and were like, if you wanted to get healthy right now, what would you do? I'd restrict calories. I'd run marathons. I'd meditate every day. I did. Right. And you, so you are a person who is, has the capacity to be like, Hmm, I think I'm getting fat. I'm going to do all the things. <laughs> and you did them. Yeah. But, and this is where like the quantum health aspect is so interesting, right? Like they had the desired outcome in one respect is that you lost a ton of weight, but then you ended up with all these other symptoms that you didn't have before. It's like my body was in a chronic stress all the time. And what is stress going to do to your mitochondria and your electron flow? It's And your redox potential, it's going to go down. Like literally, Meredith, I mean, I'm telling you, I, I'm very type A. So I clean, used to clean my house from top to bottom before I went to bed. Everything was ready. The kids' school, lunches, all the things, like all of that rigidity needed to go to. And it was like, my life was going to give me that like door to be like, you need to stop and slow down. Like you don't have another choice. So that's what happens. Like, so I think the problem is my health was already in such a, a, yeah. a challenging place. And then I got this injection. So it was like, you had all these underlying issues mm -hmm. and then you piled on all of this, the stress, the hustle of doing things hustle that go quote yeah. unquote, correct running marathons restricting calories and yet they added another layer to what was already there then when you your life switched online all day long you added yet like another layer so now we're like several layers deep in so terms much of press. so of things to be triggered <laughs> yes okay and i went and i put an injection in my arm that and was then, not a good idea and then right. my body was like we're done you're done now. Yes. Like, and so that would have been, <laughs> and that was, yeah. So you were not in a, your body was not in no. a position to deal with that. No. And so that, what, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So no, that, that makes it, it makes a big difference where you are when you receive something like that. And my body was definitely not, it was not a good time for me to do something right. like that. Um, I went from so, just, and my, just in case anyone's not catching it, like you got the COVID shot. Yes, I didn't know okay. if I was allowed to say it or not, but yes, that's what I got. Um, yeah, and I, I we'll, got it twice. We'll see what happens. <laughs> yeah, I did it twice because the first time I got it, I was like, hmm, I can't breathe as normally as I would. Like, that's weird. Like, that was my first symptom. And I was like, that's weird. And, I, and you go and you get it. And I go back to teaching and I'm like, guys, did you have your breathing? Was your breathing off or is this just me? And they're like, no, we're fine. I'm like, okay, this must be me. I'm just crazy. Like, whatever. I wrote it off. And I'm like, I'm, three weeks later, do it again. And then that, I guess if, maybe if I would have done it only once, it wouldn't have been as bad, but doing it twice, my body then just was like, I'm done with you. Like you, you, we need to let you know what's going on. So I had, I mean, pretty debilitating symptoms, panic attacks, which I had never experienced in my life. I was actually laying on my classroom floor and my mom came up and brought me a Xanax. I, that's never something I've experienced before in my life. Um, depression. Uh, it was like all this neuroinflammation just started. Like I wow. was trying to teach my kids on Zoom. And I just like, I couldn't stop crying. I remember going to the teacher in the next room. I'm like, I can't stop crying. I don't know what's wrong with me. Like, she's like, I don't know what's wrong with you either. <laughs> but I'm like, I just, I just couldn't stop crying. And I was, so all these kind of other things that I've never dealt with before were happening. And then all my joints were on fire, like tons, like tons and tons of like joint, painful joints. Uh, I started getting chronic diarrhea, just my whole system. It was almost like a complete mast cell activation syndrome reaction where like my body just, just was totally, everything was misfiring. And um, then I got another bladder infection and that bladder infection turned into, of course, antibiotics weren't touching it. And the bladder symptoms were really what, I mean, all the symptoms were there, but then I decided I had to leave my job because it just was too much. I was having chronic bladder spasms and severe burning pain that was constant. Uh, insomnia, which was out of control. My heart would race. I just couldn't calm down and fall asleep and the pain would ramp up extremely worse at night. And I literally just never slept. Like I just could not, I don't think I slept for like six months, honestly, the first six months of My this. God. It was like, I don't even, I couldn't be a wife. I couldn't be a mom. Um, and it, it got to the point where the depression was so bad that I contemplated ending my life. Like my husband would be like, I don't know if I should leave her by herself. And my mom would come over because it wow. was that bad. So like the, my kids lost a chunk of time where I was their mom, that my husband lost his wife. It was not just like, oh, you're in pain and you don't feel good. It was like, I couldn't function anymore. So it was, it was a little like scary. a complete mental, emotional, spiritual crash, crash, not just the physical symptoms. Oh, like everything. every 
single component of life down oh, yeah. at the same time. Yes. It oh, was really, Vanessa. really, it was really tough. It was a very dark time. And then I was, of course, I remember at that time I was still in the allopathic model and I was like, okay, I would leave doctor's office just literally hysterical crying because they're like, we don't know what else to give you. We can give you antidepressants. We can give you painkillers. We can remove your bladder. That was what I was told. I was like, wow, that sounds a little oh, scary. I um, think I need it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I should keep it. I'm so glad I did that. You know, like this an organ that I might need in the future. Um, yeah, there was just no good solutions. And I remember sitting there, I, I tell this story so often, but um, they had given me antidepressants and I sat there with that medicine on the counter. I'm like, I can't take this. Like I just, it didn't resonate. Like if something doesn't resonate and vibrate with you, you're like, no matter what, it would never have helped me because I was so like, I don't want to take this. Um, Cause I'm like, this is this, I ne I, if you knew me, Meredith, I'm like, I am now this happy, bubbly person. That's yeah. the person I always was. Like, that's the alignment of right. me. That's my frequency. That's my energy, right? I have, I'm not this depressed, unhappy person. That's something so this wrong. state of mind, this emotional state, this spiritual state was completely and totally out of character for you. Like, oh, it it was mean, like not who you are. Never. I had never been that way. I, I never even experienced it before. I mean, I was like, who is that? I actually... I actually would say, I don't feel like me. I don't like, I don't feel like myself. And I will say, we'll get it to get to homeopathy. There was one remedy that I took that actually made me, I'm like, oh my God, I feel like myself again. <sighs> so like, that is like, like the profoundness of that medicine is like, <laughs> it's a little, it's deep. So yeah, it's, I just didn't yeah. feel like my, I literally didn't feel like myself for, I mean, a good solid year. And also circadian biology, I would say help too. But even after doing circadian biology, I needed more. Like I needed something mm -hmm. else to get me completely out, out of that. But yeah. 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 The circadian is like the foundation, right? Totally. It's like, so your body is like set up to operate properly. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, all you in that situation, you probably needed. Yeah. yeah. I needed some more support. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah Definitely. Was, okay. So how did you get out of this? How, what happened that you found a way out? Yeah. I mean, of course I kept searching. I mean, I did, had done everything. Like literally if there was something out there to try, I tried it. Cause if you can see me, I'm a very determined person. Right. So I'm like, I'm going to figure it out. Like I'm going to keep trying until I exhaust every option there is. So of course I, I had left regular conventional medicine. I had tried functional, which was no help. I had taken all the supplements I had tried. I had tried like acupuncture, pelvic floor therapy. I had tried Reiki, hypnotherapy, uh, everything. Like there was not anything I didn't try, but nothing was moving the needle. And I started following a doctor who was talking about sunrise. And I was like, well, well, that sounds like something I could try. Why not? Right? Like go outside and watch the sunrise. And that was the first thing that actually made an impact on my healing journey was watching the sunrise. It was the first thing. And I was still pretty dilapidated at that time. So I would just go outside and sit with my feet in the grass and watch the sunrise. And that was it. And that's, I just would sit there. And that actually made an improvement in my pain and my insomnia. Cause I had this, that debilitating chronic insomnia. And when you haven't been sleeping for months and never repairing for months, like it's really hard. So then I finally was able to get some sleep. And then I just kept diving into everything. Like I probably so like I said, just, just to clarify. So waking up feet on the grass, watching the sun rise, tipped you over into a place where you could sleep. I could sleep better, better. Okay. It was an improve. It was a marked improvement. Yeah. And not, a marked okay. So not amazing sleep, but enough sleep that, that your days were shifted. Yes. And, um, an improvement in my pain. And that was only uh, after like, like a couple of weeks. So I had less pain, but I was probably spending a lot of time in morning sunlight because I was just sitting there, like literally just <laughs> sitting on the grass and my front lawn, like, just like, uh, I'll just, let's just hang out here. Like yeah. I might as well, like what else am Giving I doing? your body a restorative yes. and health, healthy moment for the first time in a really long time. I mean, time. it's so many things. I mean, it's, you know, your body knows where it is in time and space. You're gathering all the electrons. So you're getting free energy from the earth's magnetism, from the sunlight. You're setting your circadian rhythm. You're helping rebalance your hormones. 
you are helping your nervous system, which I'm sure mine was way dysregulated, you know? So there are so many factors on what that's doing on a biological right. level, but I mean, yeah. And then of course, like I said before, the UVA light, you're getting some beta endorphins that reduces pain. I mean, so many things. But yeah, it, it did make so a more So I just difference. think it's funny, right? Like you have, you know, you live in the United States, you have good insurance, you have literally every single thing available to you in the I world. Amazing medical and insurance. what moves the needle of- is sitting on the grass outside for like three hours in the morning. I like it. <laughs> It's actually hey man, I don't know. I don't make the rules. It's it, just what it happens. Just... <laughs> the best medical insurance as a teacher that you can have, literally. Like I could have gotten any yeah. treatments I wanted. There just wasn't, there's not a lot of yeah. options for people with IC. That's the thing. And that's scary. And nobody believed me that I had a jab injury. They're like, they like totally didn't. I was so right. dismissed. They're like, you know that makes I mean? no sense. What do you mean no. you're depressed because of a vaccine? That's stupid. No, no. Yeah. They're like, here's your antidepressants. Move on take this like they, it was it, that's how it felt so yeah it is crazy and I think on that, that topic we- just quickly how would you explain that how you, you know when you put like a, a foreign entity in the body that's not necessarily supposed to be there it is would you say like having a quantum effect and so it can affect depending what's going on inside that system of that individual person and it can have all kinds of different outcomes you're saying the medication or you're saying the, the- vaccine Oh, yeah. I mean, well, we had Dr. Stephanie Seneff on and uh, she was amazing. I uh, guess I have on the podcast. I talked about the vaccine and what she explained to me about the vaccine is that what it's really doing is it really destroys the thymus gland. That's the, the main mechanism that it does. And, and uh, this is her theory. And I don't know, but it destroys the thymus gland. And then it's going to it, it, the, it like makes it the way they made it was like indestructible. So people say it's out of your system, but it takes a long time to really get out. Um, and there was thymus gland is where your immune system is, but I would say it's also extremely suppressive to the immune system, right? So it's this huge, huge suppression, um, and just bring, brings your level of health down so much. And, um, that's like, I think what happened to me and there's also the toxicity of it. So it's like this astrotoxic toxicity in the bucket that your body can't handle. So there's just so many factors, you know, of why that does it. And it's just, it's causing like, an inflammatory response. But in my case, I think it causes that inflammatory response that the body should get over quickly. But because I was so weak, also the body just can't get over that inflammatory response. So the body just keeps mounting this response that it's like this loop of just inflammation, 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 because the body doesn't know how to stop it. Right. So the immune system is completely dysregulated also. So there's so many factors, but yeah. Yeah. Cause yeah, we have this very like linear thought process around these things. It's right. Okay. Like this medication could mm-hmm. cause this side effect, this side of like, right. Like there's a list mm-hmm. where, you know, when you look at things from a quantum perspective, it's like, it's a nonlinear response. <laughs> so it, like the list is like a million pages long, depending on the person. And for some people, maybe there's no side, like maybe nothing, but the, the point is we don't know. Yeah. And it's and also, you can't know, like it has to be, you have to make a side effect list individualized to every single person. Right. It's also based on your own genetic predispositions and what you're disposed to based on your your genetics and your history and all that. Like, Because obviously I've, I'm totally on board with epigenetics, right? But there are things that we are more likely to get based on environmental triggers, right? Yeah. And this is an environmental trigger. So obviously in my family lineage, there have been people who've been very depressed and had panic attacks and had you know hormonal issues and all the things, right? So it's whatever that that's a trigger, right? That's going to turn some sort of genetic predisposition on in your body, right? And there's all kinds of uh, triggers and it's going to be unique to you of how you're going to express it. That's just like with homeopathy, right? Like every, you could, okay. Everybody could get a diagnosis of, of anxiety, right? Anybody can, like that can happen, right? But the way that you express the anxiety is going to be different than somebody else based on, you know, your unique environment, your unique history, the energetic imprint, all the things, right? That has happened to you in your life you know? Right. Yeah. yeah. It's totally individualized. Very. <laughs> and which is why we need to learn how to understand ourselves, <laughs> what's going on for us. Okay. So you, um, start sitting outside in the mornings and for the first time are making some improvements, most notably in your sleep and your pain that then open a window to st- to look for the next step. 
Yeah. Well, I just started learning more about circadian biology. So I was like, oh, like I was connecting dots. I was like, okay. And like I said, I'm a researcher. I'm a learner. I'm like going to figure things out. So I'm like, okay, where can I learn more about this? And I find up finding um, Sarah Kleiner, Heather Shepard, Carrie Bennett, your pod, I don't know if it was your podcast yet, but information at least it was, it might've not been out yet, but it was coming. It comes along. And I just started finding all the information I could. And I was like, okay, I'm going to keep implementing more and more things like what else can I do? And then you start learning about, okay, I'm going to learn to block artificial light at night. And if, I have to say that also did help immensely with my, the timing that I fell asleep hugely, obviously. Um, I, I needed the red, like not everybody needs red, but I needed red. That was really the, the lenses that I needed to really be that blocking, not only blue, but green as well. So okay. that helped also immensely. So for you, would you order the blue blocking glasses you needed like the darkest, reddest lens as possible mm -hmm. is what had the best effect for you. Okay. Yes. Got yes, it. absolutely. Uh, and it was literally like passing out at like eight o'clock some nights. And I was like, wow. oh, that's so fun. And you'd previously like been awake all night long. <laughs> I mean, previously was up until like midnight, one o'clock in excruciating pain. And I was like, hmm, okay, this is nice. I'll take this. Yeah. And of course, turning all the lights out and, you know, lowering things and getting red bulbs and orange bulbs in the house and Everybody thinks I'm crazy, you know, and all of that. And, <laughs> and then your neighbors course, are like, uh, have you started developing film in your <laughs> living room? <laughs> That's yeah. what our neighbors ask. <laughs> and then I'm just like putting blue blockers like everywhere. I'm like, oh, I think you should put these on, you know, anyway. But um, no, I started implementing a lot more um, grounding too as well, like a ton more earthing. I was like, I'm going to be outside as much as I can. I started also, you know, utilizing sunlight as medicine. I learned a lot from Heather Shepard, of course, about how to do that. Um, I think I bought her Sunlight RX ebook, you know, and I was like, okay, I'm going to start implementing this. And I honestly think sunlight has been also a huge, huge game changer for me as well, especially in the UVB. I noticed that as well as a, a helpful tool for me. Um, and I started turning Wi-Fi off at night and then like mitigating non-needed VMFs. And I will say still to this day, I am sensitive. Like, I don't know if it's, you know, people, whatever it is, but I, if I'm around more non-native EMFs, sometimes I can still notice an uptick in my symptoms a lot. I mean, I'm Ethernet right now. I'm, we never use, I threw out my, I think I sold, I should say I sold my Garmin and my wired earbuds, like all the things. I, I just, anything I could learn about it, I was like, I'm going to try all of it and do all of it and just implement it all. And I also went from like a carnivore keto diet, which wasn't for me really, into more like a seasonal diet as well local. I was eating good quality at that time, but I, well, I did switch to more seasonal and adding in seasonal carbs and not being so afraid of that as well. Cause there's so much fear when you like go through what I went through because food was a trigger in a lot of ways. And, um, when you go to take these food sensitivity tests and you go to all these functional doctors are like, all these foods are causing your issue and you can't eat these anymore. And then you never can eat oxalates and you never can eat histamines again. And you're like, well, what do I eat? Like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, uh, this is scary. So it was also a lot of that too. So introducing those foods back in and yeah, it's just a lot of things like that. So it's made huge, huge impacts. Um, just quickly, like, tell us about the oxalate foods, the histamine foods. Like, what are all those foods that you had to cut out? What are the Oh my God. Like those? every, there's like, it's like everything <laughs> When you yeah. eat no, low oxalate and low histamine, it's like all foods. So, I mean, high <laughs> oxalate, it's literally all foods. Like, I was like, I don't even know what you want me to eat. Like, because even like a carnivore diet, it's going to be a high histamine diet. Or yeah. like a GAP diet, it's going to be high, high histamine because it's going to have like, right. you know, you're eating all that bone broth and ferments. So you would have, you would have no ferments. You would have, um, you know, any of that. You would, a lot of, I mean, I can't even think of foods that aren't. I mean, it's like zucchini, uh, grilled chicken. Like it's easier for me to tell you foods that aren't those foods than there are to tell you the foods that are because they are just right. so many. Um, well, so and I think this is an interesting point, right? Like for people who, who are on highly restrictive diets by either, you know, necessity or choice, it yeah. is, that's another important piece of all this, like along with the hustle culture of running marathons, there's like the hustle culture of highly restricting food. And when mm -hmm. you switch to a circadian optimized lifestyle, a quantum health lifestyle, like what was your experience with that? You introduced those foods back in and were you able to digest them? Some, so it's, it's, yeah, there were some times that I had to go back and forth and it was mm -hmm. an up and down journey. This was the first year I was finally able to eat strawberries. Thank goodness. When they came back, like, oh, so congratulations. Good, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Cause I had tried them last summer. Cause they're literally only in season for like such a short period mm -hmm. of time. That's like six weeks, you know, around here. Cause I'm, I'm 
again, I'm still, I hear very well to my seasonal diet. <laughs> I was like, I can finally eat them this year without a problem. So yeah, there were some ins and outs. And I actually, I still have to be careful with oxalates. I cannot still eat a high oxalate diet. It would, it would still make my bladder issue worse. Um, and that just might be because of the fact that I have lost so much beneficial bacteria from all the use of antibiotics in my life that, that I don't have the bacteria to break it down anymore. And I'm not sure how, I'm, I mean, I'm doing all the things to regain it, right? My mm -hmm. sunlight is helping me, you know, I'm doing all the circadian biology stuff and I'm hopeful that over time I will be able to eat whatever I want, but I'm not hundred percent there yet on eating whatever I have to still be a little careful, but I definitely have been able to eat more foods. Like I couldn't eat eggs, strawberries, like I couldn't eat really anything like that was high oxalate. Now I can have some, but it's like, I can't be, I just can't be like, I'm not at the place where I can be like, I can eat whatever I want. Like yeah. I'm not there. Yeah. Yeah. So. And that makes sense, right? I mean, we spent so many years putting our, trashing our mitochondria. <laughs> it does. I, it is, a, it is a journey, you know, and your story is reminding me a little bit of Rachel Tudor's story as mm -hmm. well. She also had like that extreme, extreme autoimmune reaction um, yeah. to the shot. And yeah, the same thing, like laying down the circadian and quantum strategies and then layering on in her case, she did water, the Veda Austin's work with uh, water crystals. And in your case, you found homeopathy. So how did homeopathy come into the picture? And I was actually, I was very frustrated actually at the time when I contacted my, my current homeopath, who is Heather Shepard, who's your, you know, who's on the quantum magic collective. So I was like, I, I can't, I don't know what to do anymore. I'm doing all this circadian stuff. And I'm still like, I still, even though I made a lot of progress and I was so grateful for all the progress that I made. Like I would still have these depressive episodes. I would still have a lot of pain. Like sometimes not every day it was less frequent, but it was still there. And I was like, I want this gone. And I was still really restricting foods and, you know, taking a lot of supplements and not really helping me. So anyway, I had come to her when I had really what only can be described as a yeast infection in the bladder because I had itchy bladder. It was like awful. I was God. like, who, who has that? It like so literally crazy what our bodies come up with. That's I don't so, know. Wow. It was really okay. unpleasant. So I was like, I'm like, and I had like an infection with an itchy bladder and it was awful. So I met with her and we did a session and I wound up taking homeopathy for it. And I was like, I had what we call in homeopathy as an aggravation of symptoms, which is actually the symptoms are the healing. So we have to, like, that's a reframe for a lot of people. And as a homeopath, I have to do a lot of coaching on that. But I was like, I had this kind of intense aggravation, a few intense aggravations of the, of this symptom. And so um, at first things got worse. Yes. <laughs> first okay. things got worse, which is typical. So I was like, okay, uh, what's wrong, you know, and then I, then I learn and I'm like, okay, this is how it goes. So then, mm -hmm. and then I had an amelioration of that symptom and it's never come back. Like I've never had itchy bladder again. Like, so then that's the magic where it's like this strong aggravation, which is the immune system ramping up. The symptoms are causing doing, it's doing with the body. It's nudging the body to do what it needed to do that it wasn't doing. Like it's telling the body, okay, this is what you have to work on. So that's why the symptoms intensify, right? And that's the immune system finally leveling up and doing its job to remove what needs to be removed. Um, and then I got better. And I, like I said, I've never had that symptom again since. Have I worked on other things with my bladder? Yes, but that symptom has been ameliorated and never came back. So then it was kind of serendipitous. I was like, she was doing the training at like right around, the, it was like literally August and then she was starting this training in September. And I was like, I have to learn this because you just fixed that. And I don't know how that happened, but you're going to teach me and I'm going to help people. So that was, I that was how that happened. It. Like, it was just like the universe landed all those dots to right. come together at the same time. And then I, yeah. you know, after her all thing. of those years and like, mm -hmm. there were a lot of years for you, Vanessa, like in like symptom cycles yes. that then got progressively worse, even as you were doing things that were supposed to be making things better, yes. they weren't. And so yeah. then you layer in some lifestyle changes, which creates enough space and enough healing to like be like, okay, what, am, what is the next step here? Mm -hmm. And you resonated with homeopathy. Very much, very much. Because I liked it because so, for so many reasons, it's, it's really about simplifying, I feel like too. It's simplifying the healing. It's not something you have to take every day. It's, well, sometimes it is, depends on the case, but it could be like a one-time dose and it continues to act on the body. And it, it resonates with me in the fact that 
my immune system has been struggling and been so weak. Like this is resonating with me in the fact that it could help to make you stronger, you know, which is honestly, I feel like circadian biology is kind of the same thing, right? You're doing the same thing when you're doing that. So it's like just all about making mm -hmm. you stronger. And yeah. it's a substance that comes from nature. But the thing about homeopathy that I think is the most interesting is that you're only taking an energetic imprint. You're not even taking a substance. So it's like, when I say that people are like, that's why it's so poo pooed because people are like, it's nothing. You're taking nothing. You're just taking an energetic yeah. imprint of a substance. So they don't understand that, but that's what makes it so powerful and why it right. makes it so effective. Yes. And once you understand that we're actually quantum biologic beings and not biochemical beings purely, mm -hmm. of course, frequency medicine is going to have an effect because we're, we are fundamentally operating on frequency. Yeah. And if you understand, like you mentioned Veda Austin's work before or Dr. Emoto's work and how water can hold an energetic imprint, that's what homeopathy is. It's taking the substance, right? You have this substance, say it's ar arsenic, right? Which is arsenic amalgam, right? People will be like, wait, arsenic? You're going to give somebody arsenic? Well, yeah, it's not exactly arsenic though, <laughs> right? It's just the frequency of it. So what they do is they take it and they make a mother tincture out of it. So that means it's, you know, soaked in alcohol for a time period and whatnot. And it's imprinted into that. And then they take that one drop and they put that into a hundred drops of water. And then they do this like vigorous shaking and succussion or like, that's what the shaking is. This is succussion. So it's like holding the energy. It's like a way to activate the remedy and keep the energy in the water. So that one drop is being imprinted into that hundred other drops of water, right? 99 drops of water. And then that process is done over and over and over again. Could be a hundred times, could be 200 times, could be a thousand times, 10,000 times, depending on the potency of that remedy. So by the time, at least in my practice, the remedies that I give, there is no original substance left. It is just the energetic imprint. That's because the water is holding that energetic imprint of that substance. So you're not actually taking, like well, the amazing part about that is it leaves only the healing potential and remove any toxicity. So that was like the magic thing that Hanuman found, who's the founder of homeopathy, because he was actually a, you know, just traditional doctor at first, but he was unhappy with the way that things were being done and people weren't being cured and he decided to leave and he started like translating medical texts and he came across the idea of like cures like which has been around for years. That's what homeopathy is. It means similar suffering. You take a substance that would actually cause the same symptoms in a healthy person, but actually cures it in the sick, right? You have to match the frequency of the disease to the person, right? But what he, what he did that was different that made it homeopathic is the dilution and the succussion, the preparation, he changed that. So it's not just giving a substance of like cures like, it's also giving a substance that is ultra dilute that removes the toxicity and only leaves the healing factor. So that's what makes homeopathy unique from anything else. <laughs> so amazing. That's yeah, cool. I love homeopathy. And I talked to, I, I had Heather on and I, I talked yeah. about it as well, that, that I have, when I was in my twenties, I happened to make friends with a constitutional homeopath and she took me through nice. the whole thing. <laughs> I wasn't sick. It was, and I was like, sorry, why, why are we doing this again? And she's like, Meredith, it's like, you're like this, like free, you're like this little bird that wants to be free, but there's like all these layers around you. And we're just peeling them off one by one with each remedy till we find your source remedy. And I was like, okay. I love that. That's beautiful the way she said it. I know. It was I was like, like I think it. that's kind of crazy, but I'll go with it. <laughs> <laughs> it is like that because every layer of the onion is like a layer of suppression. So like all, like in my case, I'm trying to peel back the layers of suppression that I've done to my immune system, whether that's jabs, whether that's all the antibiotics and antifungals and all the medications that I take birth control, all these things, they kind of like place a brick. So you're trying to like peel back each one slowly. And that's why it is a process. And the reason why it's a process also is because of the fact that Home, the magic is not in homeopathy. It's in you. You have to do the work. The homeopathy is just a stimulus. And you, yeah, it kind of forces and nudges the body to make the changes itself. And that's why the results are long lasting. So they never stop the symptoms. They never suppress the symptoms. They only support you in healing the symptoms. And when your body's doing it, it's going to take a little bit longer, especially in chronic cases. But I've seen it work in acute cases really fast. And I've seen it work in chronic cases 
quicker in children who are younger and have better redox. Like it depends on the person. It really depends on your level of health, how long it will take and how long and how deep and how chronic the issues are really. So it's all these things are all factors. But um, yeah, the other thing I wanted to mention too is that the higher the potency, so the more dilute the substance is, the more potent it is and the more powerful it is, which is always mind blowing and totally makes sense like, to me with like frequency, right? And energy, right? Yeah. It helps, because the more it's been succussed and the more it has that energetic imprint, the stronger it is. So yeah, it's just really cool. So a little goes a long way. The more, the more, almost like the more diluted it is, the more potent it is, which is Yes, Again, exactly. non-linear. <laughs> like, yeah, totally. Homeopathy is like, we are just going to play around with everything you think and you know. The, the thing about it too is like you can give one dose. Like I always mention my son who had one dose for his anxiety and it's lasted for two years without interruption. Like we've now antidoted, we don't just let it act for two years. And honestly, the longer you let it act, the deeper the healing goes. So it can, if you get that, that, not that there's one magic remedy for everybody because there are there is constitution, but everybody has lots of layers, right? And right. you're going to go in and out of different constitutions based on what's going on in your environment and all these other factors, right? But sometimes you can land it really well and that healing can, that one remedy can also heal other layers also. And it right. can last for months to years. That's why it's so important to not interrupt the healing process, which can be challenging, especially like people when they have aggravations of symptoms, which is something that happens because that's part of the healing. People are like, okay, I need another remedy because I'm now dealing with this. And I'm like, actually, we're just going to just wait. And they're like, huh? <laughs> yeah, we have to wait and see what happens because that can heal completely. And then you could have a whole different symptom set. It's with time that we need to address, but it might not too. So you you really have to always kind of wait and see what happens with homeopathy. It's, and that can be tough, but uh, the waiting is absolutely worth it. So, and I can say that from my own experience, from my kid, kids experience, from my clients experience, the longer you can wait and not change the remedy, the, the better. Right. Because we're giving, we need to give time and space to our bodies and our systems. Yeah. Um, to find that balance. It took us a long time to get out of balance. We need to give it that time and space to get back into balance. In my case, I've been out of balance since I was five. Wow. You know, so that's a long time. That's a 40 almost in a couple months. So that's a long time. Wow. So it's, it's not like it's like, oh, I can snap my fingers, you know, and fix it. And yeah. Right. And I, that's such an important point to make too, because I think, um, you know, it's hard to be sick and to be in pain and to feel depressed and to feel unwell and to not be able to sleep. And so of course we want it to all go away quickly. Um, and of course it can be demoralizing when it takes time or it gets better and then it gets worse. But as long as like, we've got our, our ship pointed in the right direction, it, you know, over time, we will come to a different, better place than where we started if we're pointed in the right direction. Right. Because healing is not linear either. Let's be yeah. honest, right? We all know that. If you ever, if anybody's been on a healing journey, they know that. And as, But as long as like the intensity, the frequency, you know, the duration of the flares or like all of that is improving and you're seeing the upward traction... There might be like a little bit of jagged here and there, then you know you're on the right path and you know you're doing the right thing and you're getting to where you need to go, right? So I, I like to remind people of that and like take those small wins too, you know? Like I used to not be able to walk without having to stop and sit on my foot because my bladder urgency was that bad. So like that's a huge win. Like I can go on five mile walks and be perfectly fine. So like you have to, you have to also like, we want everything to be fixed in one, you know, session or month or two months or three months, but we have to like take those wins and be like, this has made a difference. And this is huge, you know? And there's so many other things, like I said before, like feeling like myself, I don't have depression anymore. That was also helped with homeopathy big time as well. Like I need, I needed that, you know, and there were, and when something like that gets aggravated again, that's hard. It's hard. Cause you're like, Oh, I thought I dealt with this. I thought it was over. And there it comes back and you and it's really intense, you know, so th there's a lot of things that have made huge traction for me. Um, so I'm, I'm very grateful for 
all the things that have been happening and come into my field, you know? <laughs> well, Vanessa, I mean, your story is just incredible and you're sitting here like healthy and vibrant and, you know, helping other people and to hear where everything was and what you went through. It's, you know, well done. Oh, you have thanks. a I appreciate strong that. spirit. Yeah. yeah. I'm a Scorpio. So we like, you know, <laughs> we're like, don't go down on a fight, you know, you know? Yeah. that's it. Like we're, we're going to yeah. move through this world, you know? Yeah. Well, thank goodness. So yeah. what's it been like, you know, because you, you know, you have the same family, you live in the same place and you went from mm-hmm. being, you know, a public school elementary teacher to being a quantum health homeopath. (laughs) Like Like what? How has that been, you know, just in for your life in general? Yeah, well, there was some grieving for sure in all of that, like making all these life changes. Cause actually I love being a teacher. I mean, there were things about it I hated for sure. And there were things about it that were like, I wasn't aligned to, and I had felt a pull away from it for a little while. Not that I didn't want to be with kids and teach kids, but like some of the things that I was teaching or what I had to teach just didn't seem important. And I also taught special ed. So I was like, this is not really important. They don't really need to know this. This is not right. Let's work on relationships. Let's work on communicating with each other. Like I, I had a lot of different views and yeah, I just, so there was a little of that, but so there was some grieving though, like letting go of that position, letting go of that job, letting go of that secure income. And that was also hard on my family too. I won't deny that. Like that was hard for everybody to accept my parents to accept that I'm no longer going to do this career. And, but I felt really aligned to all the decisions I made. And I would, I would say circadian biology probably helped me with all of that. Cause I was like, this is not for me anymore. Like I was able to put up boundaries on it. Like, cause I could have went back, like I took a leave from my job. So I could have gone back to it, but I had felt like that wasn't the life that I wanted to go back to. It wasn't the hustle that I wanted to go back to. It, it wasn't, it didn't feel aligned anymore. So there was a lot of some grieving for me, but then it was a lot of acceptance and a lot of acceptance of everybody understanding my boundaries and a lot of acceptance of the people in my life understanding that, that this is not what I was going to do anymore. And then there was also the, um, the growth that happened through all of that. Like, okay, I'm this, like, okay, I'm going to start my own business now. That's like huge, right? That's like a really big step. And honestly, I don't think I would have done that without circadian biology and homeopathy. Like I needed that to bring me back to alignment of what I wanted. And yeah, then all this passion and purpose comes through for that. Like, you're like, oh, I'm going to start a podcast now and get all that done. So that's been amazing. And like, just living this life and being with all of these people and being connected to all of these people has been that community, that connection, that support, all of that, that was really lacking for me, even before I got sick, like, honestly, like before I landed where I landed, that was missing. And I just, I love all that. So it fostered all of that, but yeah, it's just, it's been a wild ride and I'm, I'm really happy and thankful to where I am now. And I'm, I'm happy and thankful to have started the business and, and got myself out there and I'm proud of myself for pushing forward. Cause it's kind of scary. Like I won't lie. Like, Oh, you're going to put yourself I'm out on scary. Instagram. It's effing terrifying is what it I is. Like to put out <laughs> on Instagram and to start a podcast and like, you know, I'm so glad like I did it with Heather Crimson. Cause that made it a little bit easier to like, do like start with somebody. And I, I love her and love doing the podcast with her, but I look forward to it every week. And then of course, like now I have, I, I like, it's funny, like in the beginning with putting yourself on Instagram or on YouTube or all that, it was really hard. But now I'm like, I like love it. And I think it's the teacher in me, the passion, the purpose that's in me, that that fire that wants to share it. Like I literally like walk like um, I walk literally every day. And every day I'm like, oh, I'm gonna make a video on this. Like I gotta take like I just I don't know. Like I have a need and a and a desire and a thriving passion to share the information. So I'm constantly sharing and I just, I hope that it leaves a mark. And when it does, I have so much gratitude for that. And it just, any little ripple effect and any little effect I'm making on people, because this knowledge needs to get out there. You know, I wish those functional medicine doctors or even, even, I mean, forget, I'm like, okay, allopathic, maybe not yet, but at least the functional medicine doctors and naturopaths I would have went to would have said, hey, instead of tryptophan, buy some blue blockers or like, I just wish this information just was more known. So I'm going to just keep spreading the message and keep sharing it as much as I can until people are sick of hearing me. And if they are, then then I don't resonate. That's fine. Like I want you to go with what resonates with you, but I'm like going to talk about it. So I'm blue in the face. Like, so, and I, and I love, and God bless you for doing that. (laughs) 
you know, I think sometimes we feel like, oh, everyone knows this now. No, no. they don't. Oh, like oh, you no. step outside, you go anywhere, go to any social gathering, go to your no your Nobody whatever knows. religious practice you do go hang out with, like everyone's like what are you talking about <laughs> no they know nothing of it. it's, no it's so so true um like the other day a couple weeks ago i was you know i stop and i'm walking my dog and i stop my dog talks with the talks plays with their dog and um the lady's got on sunglasses and I, I try, like, I try to like, mm, you know, she's, you know, and then I'm like, okay, it's, it's early in the morning. I'm out at like 6 a.m. And she's like, yeah, I'm making my vitamin D. I'm like, no, you're not. I'm like, I want to just, I got, there's so much education we need to teach. Like it's beyond. And, you know, people have to be willing and yeah. ready to receive. I think that's something I learned. I used to be more forceful. Um, but now I'm like, okay, when you're ready and you're willing, I'm here for you. I'm here to share the knowledge with you. Um, and that's all I can, all I can do. Um, and just when they're ready, I'm here. Yeah. 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 No, you got to wait for people who are interested. I will say though, the early morning sunglasses kills me. Like if it's the yeah. middle of the day or whatever, I'm like, all right, you know what? I can I see why you think you need those, but like, it's fairly light out. <laughs> it, we didn't even you share know, this. Yeah. Just- we didn't. Popping those on the top of your head instead of over your eyeballs is totally going to change your day and the sleep you're going to have today. I'd- I'll never forget on your podcast when Valerie said your eyes are hormone making organs. I love that. I'm going to say that so much. I'm like, that is great. When anybody wears sunglasses, I'm like, do you know your eyes make hormones or hormone making organs? You might want to let them have the light that they need. But I didn't even tell you this. Meredith, I was so photosensitive. You have no idea. Like I could never go outside without sunglasses. I've had LASIK and it actually made me more photosensitive. I had it Uh... probably like 15 years ago. Um, I also had like night vision issues with it as well. I don't know if that was from necessarily the LASIK or not, but I had, but blue light toxicity probably, but like night vision, vitamin A issues. Right. Um, So I used to be so photosensitive. I never wore without sunglasses. And I also always was extremely sensitive to the sun and would have all kinds of like rashes from it as well. Um, So these were all things that I now look back. I'm like, Oh, you had a sunlight deficiency back then, but you didn't even realize it because my eyes were so weak. My skin couldn't tolerate the sun. Uh, And now I'm like, literally people, the lady yesterday walking was like, you are so tan. She's like, is that a spray on? I'm like, absolutely not. Nope. <laughs> this, this, is, this is my built-in melanin that I make myself. And I'm like, and it's neuroprotective. So you might want to try building some. <laughs> it's, and it's, it's crazy when you learn all this stuff, like how much it works and like how deep acting, like the research on melanin, I'd love to learn more. And I'm always trying to find more information on it. But it's like, it's not just protective to the skin. It's protective to your brain. And if you want to avoid like Parkinson's and Alzheimer's and dementia and all that, you want to definitely be outside in the sunlight, building up your melanin as much as you can. So, yeah. It is. I mean, it's just so fascinating. It is. It's, it is. Well, because this is where we're meant to be, right? We're yeah. not meant to be here sitting inside this box, you know, I got my windows yeah. open, but you know, I'm meant to be outside under the light grounded. I'm, that's where I'm meant to live. And so are you, and we are all at, we forget we are mammals. We belong in nature, just like everybody else. Like we, we've totally lost that. Like we're like, when people say things like that, they're like, no, I'm like, no, you are yeah. actually, you belong outside. Yeah. We, we've come, we think of nature as like something to go visit. No, like, yeah, you are like in nature. the store. <laughs> yeah, the like, yeah. weekend camping trip. No, no, yeah. you are in nature. You should be connected to it all the time. And that connection alone also is going to bring deeper consciousness, deeper spirituality. Like I view sunrise now. I mean, the beginning I, I didn't as much, but over the time, over time, it's such a spiritual practice for me too. It's like a moment of peace and gratitude and spirituality that I have and Again, there's also that whole like slowing down piece in me. Like I know my body forced that to happen, but that also needed to happen because I couldn't continue going at the pace I was going, like being the energizer bunny who never stopped. Like my body was like, you're going to like learn to appreciate the small things again. You're going to learn to appreciate sitting in the sand with your feet in the water and just being and not doing all the time. And I have this pattern in me. So I have to sometimes remind myself don't do some work, go do that. You know what I mean? Like, cause that pattern is deep ingrained in me, you know? Yes. Like yes. when, when a little bit of space in the day opens up, 
and it's like the first thought is like, oh, what can I get done? And I'm like, yes. Or I could go for a walk in the forest. <laughs> yes. And we live right by the beach. So I'm like, oh, we can go to the beach for the day and just. Oh, amazing. Go in yeah. Well, could not too close. I mean, it's like yeah. 20 minutes away, but, but I mean, still, we're, I'm on yeah. Long Island. So yeah, it's not, I just, I couldn't move away from it. I, I don't know. Amazing. Well, Vanessa, thank you so much for sharing your incredible story. I mean, I knew the highlights of your story, but I didn't know the details. And um, yeah, I mean, I know I've already said it, but I'll say it again. Like you, you are setting an example that is going to have ripple effects for so, so many people who well, are you. struggling and suffering, um, even though they're trying to do the best they can. Yeah. So thank you for having the courage and the spirit to make different choices. Well, thanks. I appreciate that. And like I said, I'm glad that my life took this path because I don't know, I think spreading this message is so important and it's definitely, and like there are people in my practice with homeopathy who wouldn't be having the healing outcomes, right? If this yeah. never happened to me. So I, yeah. you know, it's just, everything's meant to be. Yeah. And they're finding you, you have a frequency that's going to attract in people who would never have found this type of practitioner before if you hadn't decided to become one. Yeah. Yeah. So. Thank you. Thank you. Was, I'm so glad we got to finally have you on. Thanks, Vanessa. Yeah. Thank you. Woohoo. You made it to the end of another episode. Thank you so much for joining us on this exploratory adventure into new realms. Your energy and support are building a different world, and I am so grateful to be on this journey with you. Take care and thanks.